We're considering the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He appears a second time. Tonight I want to focus on looking for his appearing. The Word of God says this, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time mm -hmm. without sin Amen. unto salvation. <clears throat> now every generation has been given something to look for, something to anticipate, mm -hmm. something to long for. From the very beginning, before Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden, or driven out, as the scripture says, they were given something to look for, something to anticipate <clears throat> in the future. It was a seed, the seed of the woman. He didn't give them much information. Seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. That's, that's it. That's how much they knew. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, it was quite a long time before God said anything more about this. Matter of fact, it was nearly, nearly 2,000 years before he said anything more. Uh -huh. Before he ever uttered another word about this. You imagine, as long as we've been in, as long as from now back to when Jesus was, all he had to live on was somebody, someone's going to be born of a woman is coming. Uh -huh. That was it, that's all he knew. <clears throat> Abraham came and the Lord enlarged a bit on this, that he said, there's a blessing coming, there's a blessing coming. Not only is the seed of woman going to bruise the serpent's head, but through this seed, the whole world, all families of the earth will be blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something to look forward, mm -hmm. look forward to. Time of Moses came and he elaborated on a little bit more about a little over 500 years later. He elaborates on a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moses said, "One uh, God's going to raise up someone like me, a prophet, and the people are going to listen to it which that was a prophet, sort of unlike Moses, that people didn't listen to Moses. They said, they'll listen. People listen. Mm -hmm. Listen to him. And some time passed, and the prophets began to surface, and they gave something for people to look for, something to anticipate. Isaiah said, a son's going to be given to us. Mm -hmm. A child will be born, and the government will be on his shoulders, and of his increase of his government there shall be no end. Right up to the time of Mary, the mother of our Lord, there's uh, something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. His name should be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm. See, something always, this is God's manner. Yeah. Something to look forward to. Amen. You want to avoid being immersed in the now. Yeah. You must avoid this at all costs. Do not get buried in the now. You'll Amen. die. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can't survive without hope. By hope, we're saved. We're saved by hope. Amen. Amen. Got to have hope. Amen. Satan's strategy is to mire us in the now. He doesn't mind if you call it religious. He doesn't mind if it's church. He doesn't even mind if it's Bible reading. He doesn't care. Just as long as your faith doesn't get out of the now. Yeah. As long as you don't look ahead. But see, the, we, live, we live and saved by hope. Now Jesus is going to... He's going to be, it's going to be good news for when Jesus comes for those that look for him. It's going to be uh, bad news for everybody else. Yeah. Now, what about this concept of looking? What does it mean? It's like, look, like glancing occasionally? No, it's, it goes deeper than this. Even academically, the word is a very profound word. Even if you just like a dictionary definition or a lexicon definition, you look at the Greek meaning or the English meaning, it's a very weighty very weighty word. It means to assiduously and patiently wait for. Mm -hmm. That means you're committed to this. This isn't something that's done occasionally or once in a while or maybe Sunday morning. God save us from Sunday morning religion. Amen. To expect and eagerly await. Mm -hmm. Amen. To look for. Mm -hmm. It's expectantly, anticipating it, mm -hmm. anxious, mm -hmm. eager mm -hmm. to expect anxiously, like a bride waiting for a wedding day. Mm -hmm. She's not thinking, oh no, it's getting closer. 
I'm afraid to see the second coming of Christ scares a lot of people that profess to be Christians. Mm -hmm. This is very abnormal. Mm -hmm. Never let anyone lead you to believe this is a normal condition that you get frightened when you hear about Christ coming. Of course, if you are frightened, don't pretend like you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't pretend like you're not. You want to ask the Lord to give you grace so that this is a good sound. Amen. So you can look. So you can look because if you're not looking for it, anticipating it, stretching forward like for it, eager about it, fervently waiting for it, well, it won't be good for you anyway. Right. Now, doctrinally, if we think of this doctrinally, looking, looking, it has to do, first of all, with focus. You're zeroed in on something. You're not like just scanning the horizon, just kind of scanning about, seeing what's, uh, what's going on, seeing what, something maybe of interest out there. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. Not like you go to Yellowstone, look around, you know, see if you can see something nice. Focus. Mm -hmm. Here's how the prophet put it, using this, using this word, taught us about it. Isaiah 45, 22, look unto me mm -hmm. and be ye saved. All ye ends of the earth, for I am God. There's none beside me. Look, that's focus. Amen. Get me in your eye and keep me in your eye. Amen. That's look, look means this. Looking for the appearing of the Lord is you, you zero in on this and you don't take your eyes off of it. Mm -hmm. It has a way of clearing up everything else. Looking as with focus. It has to do uh, with expectancy. Like even when uh, when a, a mother is about to bear a child, we say she's expecting. That's the word. That's the word we use. She's expecting. That is it's a good thing. It's going to happen. She's looking forward, looking forward to it. Thus the scriptures say, looking for that blessed hope mm -hmm. and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Expecting it, anticipating it. It may be today. One good thing about it, you just you stand two chances here of coming into the blessing. You may die and be absent from the body and present with the Lord, or the Lord may come. So you got two, two opportunities at least for this to come before the presence of the Lord. And there's a sense of eagerness, like you're, like you're running toward this time. Even in a cross-country run, when you get toward the end, you, you sprint. You don't slow down. Sprint. Here's how Peter put it, 2 Peter 3.12, looking for and hasting yeah. unto the coming of, a, of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire mm -hmm. shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. How about hasting toward that day? That's yeah. a, <laughs> we're running toward this day when the earth's going to be burned up. That's what it said. Mm -hmm. Hasting mm -hmm. toward it. Well, why? Because it's just going to be burned up. No, because that's when Jesus is yeah. is coming. That, Amen. That's what the point is. Amen. And of course there's a sense of eagerness. Yes. There's a sense of eagerness in this, as Peter said, hasting toward it. And there's also a sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. Keep yourselves in the love of God, Jude says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's just a kind of an air of confidence that mm -hmm. when this is all, all my troubles are going to like end right there. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be it. And all the things you're longing for are going to be there, right there. Mm -hmm. See, so you're, all this is involved in the idea of looking, focus, and expectancy, and eagerness, confidence. It has the idea of waiting, which emphasizes perseverance, keeping in the race, keeping believing, not getting bogged down in the slew of despond. As John Bunyan said in Pilgrim's Progress, perseverance. 1 Thessalonians 1.10, wait for his son from heaven. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Whatever the Lord's put given you to do, keep doing it. Yeah. Amen. If you're tempted to blow hot and cold or let the pedal off the spiritual gas, so to speak, don't do it. Yeah. You don't want Jesus to come and your foot not be on the gas. Yeah. That's right. You don't want him to come and you sort of sit on to the side of the road and say, oh, I'm getting really tired. I have all these responsibilities and I think I'll rest a little while here. You don't want to do that. Right. You want to pray for grace to be stronger. Amen. More fervent. 
It all is involved in looking. All is all is involved in looking to the Lord and it of enduring. Enduring. Second Thessalonians 3 5, the Lord direct your heart into the patient mm -hmm. waiting for Christ. Patient. Not, patient doesn't mean the kids are drawn on the wall, but I don't get mad about it. Yeah, that's, right. that's not what it means. You really do or should get mad about that. <laughs> That's not what patient means. People get this idea. Patient means you can be in the middle of a bunch of tomfoolery and it just doesn't agitate you. Well, it agitates God. Isn't it ought to agitate you? Yeah. It's a little word of wisdom when the children get to upset and you transfer the discomfort to them. Yeah. It's a little word of wisdom. <laughs> Longing and waiting, aspiring and craving. The coming of the Lord. So that's the concept we're talking about. To them that look for Him. We're talking about to them that are focused on this. We're speaking about those who are expecting it. Looking forward to it. They're eager about it. They're running toward it. Getting, they're putting, expending all the effort they can to keep this awareness very, very keen. They have a lot of confidence about this. They know when this... When this happens, whatever's troubling not me now isn't going to trouble me then. Right. And whatever I feel deficient in now, I'm not going to be deficient in then. See, that's just that's just expectant note and confident note. And it involves that idea of enduring, just keep keep on plotting. In the long distance runners, there comes a time when you're running long distance that you almost like run automatic. You just you kind of hit your second wind, they call it. <laughs> you just keep Mm -hmm. And up until then, it's kind of, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Brother Gilvey knows this, he's a runner. Up until then, you, sometimes there's a point you have to extend yourself till you get to that point. But then you get this, get to this point, you just kind of, you just kind of, you kind of want to stride there. That's, you want to get to that point where you're running a good, good steady pace toward Amen. the coming of the Lord. Amen. And enduring all the, uh, all the things that hinder that. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now we talk about looking, maybe we should mention a little bit about things that we should not look for. Mm -hmm. Things that are coming, and what I'm going to talk about here are things that they are coming, mm -hmm. but we're not to look for them. Right. This is the kind of a technical doctrinal point, but this is the day we've got to talk about this because mm -hmm. we've got all kind of preachers and teachers and professed prophets asking us to look at stuff <coughs> that is... We don't question it's going to happen, all right. We know these things are going to happen that are trying and so forth, but these are not what we're to look at. That's my point here. For instance, we're not to look at the things that are coming upon the earth. Men's hearts failing them for fear, looking for things that are coming upon the earth. Luke 21, 26 says, men's hearts failing them for fear looking after toward those things that are coming upon the earth. So the Lord told them there's going to be, there's going to be a pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places, all manner of trials, signs in the heavens and signs on the earth and trouble among the nations and kingdom arising against kingdom. And hey, these are very real now what he's talking about. But those are not, that's not what we look at. Mm -hmm. Not in the sense of our text. Even though it's going to come. We're not to look at things that are seen. 2 Corinthians 4.18 While we look not, look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. Mm -hmm. The things that are not seen are eternal. Amen. John tells us in 1 John 2.18, he said, You have heard that, that Antichrist shall come. Yes, this is the truth. But this isn't what we look for. This isn't what we're looking for. This isn't what we're focusing on. This isn't what we're expecting. We know it's going to happen, but this isn't what we're looking for. Yeah. There's got to be a fine line drawn. Mm -hmm. In doctrinal presentations, yeah. and when people talk about the last times and the last days, there's got to be a fine line. You can't leave people looking at that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. They've got to be looking to Christ's coming. Amen. Right. That's what right. you look for. What brings the blessing? Amen. Right. And this in no way diminishes the fact that what we're talking about here mm -hmm. is in fact going to come 
And a lot of it may have come already, but that's not to be the focus of our attention. Mm -hmm. right. Revelation 13, 17 speaks of a, of a beast that puts his mark on someone on the forehead or on the hand, either in the way they think or the way they work, mm -hmm. that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, mm -hmm. or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Well, people read this, and man, they got people scared about this. Yeah. Say, boy, you better watch out. This will happen to you. This is not what we look to. Mm -hmm. You can't read the Bible and get the remotest idea that that's the main thing. Right. Even though it's very real. I understand, very real. The person who denies this is foolish because God speaks at length about it. Right. But that's not where our vision rests. If we're going to glance at anything, we glance at that. Mm -hmm. We look to Jesus. Amen. See, there's quite, there's quite a bit of difference here now. Well, the man of sin, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. The day shall not come. That's the day of the Lord's coming. Shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. For, so that he is God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God so far said well we think that already come to pass and well just this isn't something you speculate about that's right That's right. this is very real Paul says about the time he's going to be revealed well if people are wondering who he is it can't very well be revealed can it I mean that seems kind of plain to me but aside from that this isn't what we focus on right the point of our doctrine is not the man of sin is coming. Mm -hmm. The focus of our doctrine is the Savior from sin is Amen. coming. Amen. That, that's what our focus is. Yes. Looking for Him. And what about the, there's, a, there's one reference in the Bible to what people have called the Battle of Armageddon. That phrase isn't mentioned in the Bible. Here's, here's the one place. The one place the word's mentioned. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Revelation 16, 16, he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. That's it. Now how you can build an enormous doctrine on that is kind of a mystery, isn't it? In fact, people have done it. And they've got people looking, talking, thinking about this. Well, why, why is it that there's sort of a vagueness about this? There's some considerable said about this in the old scriptures called Megiddo. The, I understand that. But, this, but it's always kind of... The little bit about it is not quite plain. And you wish he'd say a little bit more about it. Mm -hmm. But why didn't he? Because he doesn't want you looking at this. That's why. He's letting you know this isn't over yet, isn't it? The next verse after that said that the Lord showed up and destroyed them all. Amen. That's, Amen. The very, that's the very next verse. Amen. Verse 17. That's what Amen. it says. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he said, don't look at this, because this is like a temporary situation. Yeah. It's going to be resolved like instantly. Uh -huh. Some battles drug off, have drug on for a long time. See, some, this one's not. And a lot of, those are things we don't look at. They all speak of realities that are not to capture our attention. And yet in this day and age of Christian literature, whatever, whatever that means, it's easy to get distracted on this stuff yeah. because you look in the bookstores and boy, you'll find <laughs> you'll find all kind of books about these things I just talked about, mm -hmm. and they're very interesting, but they don't have really a lot of scriptural texts in them. You'll notice mm -hmm. if they have a scriptural reference in the back, there's it's not it's not a lot of pages mm -hmm. at all, and they're they're, folk, they're causing people to look focus on something that God does not intend to be our focus. That's that's my point. Now we look for his appearing. Now it's precise language. Very precise. He doesn't say we look for his coming. Mm -hmm. He says we look for his appearing. Mm -hmm. Now I respectfully dedicate that to people who believe in a secret rapture. Mm -hmm. Because the even the way that even if you accepted the doctrine of the secret rapture, you couldn't call it an appearing. That's right. That's the whole point of the doctrine, is that he, Jesus comes secretly. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for a secret Amen. coming. Mm -hmm. Notice our text is very particular here. Mm -hmm. Those who look for his appearing. Mm -hmm. Jesus is very, very precise. 
in this. Amen. When there's no question anymore about who he is. No question. Mm -hmm. That's when every knee's going to bow and every tongue's going to confess that Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. Thank God for it. We look, we're looking for him who shall appear the second time. Now this is not the looking of Hebrews 12 too. Let's run the race with patience looking unto Jesus. See that? That's looking too. But that's not the looking we're right. talking about here. We're looking for the appearing here right. of the one we've been looking at by faith now. And you must... Well, here's the aim. You want whoever, whatever kind of Jesus you're focused on now, you want that to be the one that appears. Yeah. When the Jesus, the real Jesus, appears... He's going to disintegrate a lot of theology. Do you understand that? He's going to just destroy instantly a lot of concepts about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're looking to the real Jesus, there'll be perfect harmony between the Jesus that appears and the one to whom you were looking when you were running Amen. the race by faith. This is not the, not the looking of 2 Corinthians 4.18. There it says that we look to the things that are not seen. See, those are the look of faith. Both that run the race looking to Jesus, that's the look of faith. Looking to the things not seen, that's the look of faith. But looking for him who's appearing, when he appears, that's not going to be by faith. That's going to be, that's going to be right out open. No, it's not going to be by faith then. Faith is a temporary means while we're in this body and in this world. But that then, then it's not going to be by faith anymore. Now why do we look for him to appear? Why, why do this? I will tell you this, that uh, you can't do this by commandment. Uh -huh. Now I command all of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, to look for his appearance. See, you, can't make, <laughs> you can't make somebody do this by command. Maybe why don't you throw a little thread in there? And if you don't, you'll go to hell. Well, just uh -huh. throw that in there if you want. Say, if you don't do this, God will chase you. He'll punish you if you don't do this. See, that won't do it. It won't do it. You, because it's a matter of the heart. Mm -hmm. And you can't, by a commandment, make a, make a man's heart do something. Mm -hmm. So this looking is, assumes <laughs> that you've, you've come into acquaintance with Christ now, by grace, through faith, and say, something about that message you've heard has made you expect it for Jesus to come. Yes. There's something in the, in the resident, in the gospel, <coughs> That when a person embraces the gospel of Christ, it whets his appetite for more of Christ. It's just, it's just built into it that way. And, and you want more of him, closer to him, see him more clearly. So let's look at why. Why do we look for his appearing? Not just out of novelty. Well, at last we'll get to see what he's really like. It's not like that. Here, here's an example, Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. Oh, see that? So this is not just a, like a spectating type thing, seeing him coming. We're going we're gonna to be seen for who we really are, too. Amen. No more question about that. So we're looking for him, because that's how we're going to be revealed. God will not let you be fully revealed until his son is fully revealed. Yeah, right. that would, see, this, would, this is only proper. G Jesus should first be seen clearly before you're seen clearly. Uh -huh. In fact, even in this world, no one will really be able to understand you to any real degree until they understand Jesus. When they see him clear, they'll see you clear. So there's one reason. Here's another reason. 2 Timothy 4.8 Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me in that day and not to me only but to all those them also that love his appearing. Well that's quite a phrase. That's quite a phrase. Love his appearing. Right. Have you ever wondered why there's so little really preached about Christ coming? About his appearing? <laughs> Why there's so little really said about that? However, it seems like whenever you hear someone speak about Christ coming, there's a tendency to speak about it from a novel point of view. Yes. And it's just something about it that kind of falls short. You ever wondered why it's that way? Well, I can tell you. It's because they don't love his appearance. Mm -hmm. That's why. Mm -hmm. 
All those who love his appearing. Let me read this again so you see the weight of this text. There's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. That means you'll be, this will be the part that really defines you, your righteousness. That's going to really define who you are, your righteousness. And the Lord's going to give the righteousness he'll give me in that day. And, but not, to, not just to me, Paul says, but to everybody, now you think you say, who works real hard. Yeah. But he'll give that crown to everybody who works real hard. He doesn't say that. He says, who love his appearing. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Which means you really can't work real hard if you don't love his appearing. See, that's what motivates you. Yes. We're saved by hope. See, that is, Amen. you work out your salvation of fear and trembling just to the extent you're sure Christ is going to appear. Amen. If there's any question about that, you kind of slough off. Yep. Or if it recedes into the background of your thinking, mm -hmm. all of a sudden something else rises to the foreground in your thought. And, and dethrones the thought of Christ coming and maybe it has something to do with today, maybe it has something to do with yesterday or tomorrow, but it's not Him, then all of a sudden, righteousness kind of becomes an auxiliary yeah. yes. that you can or cannot have. But you'll receive a crown <laughs> of righteousness. That's a crown that you're given because of righteousness. Now here's another reason. He's going to appear without sin unto, in order to salvation. Hebrews 9.28. Mm -hmm. First time Jesus appeared, he dealt with sin. That's what he did. He dealt with sin. When Jesus comes again to those that look for him, he's not going to deal with sin. He's going to, without sin. Not to deal with sin. He's going to come to consummate salvation. Amen. That's what he's going to come to. For those that are involved in this process of being change from glory to glory or being conformed to the image of his son when jesus comes he's going to complete the project amen that's what he's going to come for unto salvation amen peter called it a salvation ready to be revealed is we're the ones that's not ready everything else is ready the only thing that's not ready is us right amen and so when christ comes that all, all readiness and work toward being ready will be finished amen Work completed. Here's another reason. I'm pointing out why we're look. We're look for his appearing. Because there's things going to happen then that they aren't going to happen any other time. Here this first Peter 1 7. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold, that's your faith. It's not the trial that's much more precious than gold, it's the faith. Mm -hmm. It's much more precious than gold that perishes, though it gold or faith, be tried with fire, that your faith might be found to the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So your faith will produce praise, honor, and glory when Jesus comes. Yeah. It's going to produce it in you. It's going to produce it in those that see you. It's going to produce it in God that sees you in Christ that sees you, in the angels that see you. Until then, you're a believer incognito. Yep. <laughs> you're in disguise. You're undercover. That's what you are. You're an undercover heavenly agent. And it really shouldn't surprise you if people that are unacquainted with Jesus can't tell who you are or why you do what you do. You shouldn't be stunned at this. Yep. Persecution and opposition shouldn't surprise you. But what alternative do sinners have? When they see someone whose life intimidates them and exposes <laughs> them as false, of course they're going to lash out against you. But when Jesus appears, <laughs> now that's another story. Then your faith has been tried, will appear to his praise and honor yeah. and glory. So we're looking. In other words, we want that. Yeah. We want God. Is God is God praised by your faith? See, those are things you ask yourself. The question this question. Is God, does God receive a lot of honor and glory in heaven because of my faith? And those are things each person has to examine himself to see if he's in the faith. And if he doesn't, then as we mentioned this, this morning, if he is, does it, you don't go back and rehearse all your past life and 
dig a big grave for yourself to fall into. You start right now, which is the only moment you got, and say from this point on, that's going to be my ambition. Yeah. Is for God to be praised. Well, my faith in God, He'll come and He'll help you. So that when Jesus comes, this will really ha this will really happen for you. Here's another, 1 Peter 5, 4. Uh, you won't hear this text spoken at many elders meetings or board meetings, but this would be a good one, I would suppose, for those kind of meetings. Peter speaking to the elders. He said, when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory mm -hmm. that fades not away. <laughs> well, so they had a person who's labored in the word and in the doctrine. This sounds... Yeah. Sounds pretty good. Amen. Because sometimes here you labor in the word and the doctrine and like you don't exactly get a crown for it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Sometimes you get crowned, but not the way you <laughs> not the way you like. It's not received properly here. But see, the, all these records are kept in heaven. Amen. And when Jesus appears, the shepherd appears, he's going to give you a crown. Of glory. Amen. And it's not going to be like those Grecian wreaths that faded. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's going to last forever. So that's, that's something worth looking forward to. Amen. So in any, when any of you, particularly those of you who in some capacity speak or mm -hmm. teach or feed the flock, in any capacity at all, you anticipate this. Yeah. Look Amen. forward to his coming. Then that's yeah. like payday. <laughs> yes. So your wages are kind of being accrued at this time. Some people know they'll buy an insurance policy, and it, it, it's a twofold thing. It, it insures them, and they, but they invest in it too. So after 20, 30 years, they can cash in the policy and get get some money. Well, it's, that's what you're doing. Your labors in the Lord are like a, you're accruing wages, that, and it's going to be cashed in when Jesus comes. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> You have a crown of glory. How's that? You do want your crown to be a shining. <coughs> yeah. Amen. When the Lord comes. Now we're looking for the coming of the Lord. Well, here's another reason. 1 John 2.28. Now little children, <coughs> abide in him that when when he shall appear. Right? This, when, when he shall appear. Not when he shall sneak in. When he shall appear. Right. Amen. We may have confidence to not be ashamed before him at his coming. Mm -hmm. How's that? That's quite a thought. That's quite a thought. Now, John's immediate reference here was John had invested in these people, his apostles. He, he didn't want to be ashamed because he spent all his time working in soil and didn't grow anything. See, this would be, this would be a shame. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be, it's become fashionable in some circles. They say, well, so-and-so labored for... 55 years there and only had one convert. Someone said, well, praise the Lord. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure that's proper. I'm a little, I have had some questions about it. I'm not prepared to make a long discourse on the subject. But I'm not sure that's right. I'm not sure this is the way God works. Well, through history, he spent time toiling what brought good fruit. And when it didn't, he said, how come I got these sour grapes? Why these sour grapes? When the Lord comes again, you want to have confidence and not be ashamed, not only for yourself, but where you spent your time. Where you spent your time, you don't want to have to be ashamed. The Lord, I, I took this talent you gave me, and I, I spent most of my life talking to people that didn't care about it. I'm not sure that this would be the wise thing to do. And if you're your own master, you stand or fall. I understand. You've got to make up your mind yourself on something like this. But this, I'm sharing, I'm sharing with you the way I, I think. Well, my mind works on this. I come to the point where I, I can vividly remember the time. I have been used to speaking to hundreds of people, and I wasn't doing that anymore. <laughs> and so I told the Lord, I'd rather, I'd rather speak to 25 people that would receive it and to hundreds that didn't. You know, he, he gave me this 25 people. That's exactly how it's, I almost went back and said, could I rephrase that <laughs> but uh, that's that's the Lord that, why did I feel that way well I didn't understand this as fully then understands I do now but I understand now that what that is is there's something intuitively in you that you don't want to waste your time mm -hmm. for God that's right why because we're looking for this coming mm -hmm. we don't want to be ashamed 
Amen. He's the one that gave us what we have. If you've got any insight, you got it from God. Amen. Amen. Or for be more particular, from Christ. Amen. You received it from Him. Now you 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 labor so you're not ashamed at His coming. And of course, who can forget the word of the Lord in 1 John 3, 2, when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. Notice all these texts said appear. When He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. So that's when this ultimate transformation is going to take place. The ultimate change. In which now we're just having, in, our present change is an investment in that change. It's a preliminary. We're in a preliminary change now. That's going to be the ultimate one. So we're looking for that. And when his kingdom appears, he's, when he appears, his kingdom's going to appear. 2 Timothy 4, 1 says, at his appearing and kingdom. So that's what, Now here in this life, there are people who have questions about his kingdom. What is it? Where is it? You know, and, there's, and we urge people to look into these things. This is, this is not bad to look, in, look into these things, try and have an intelligent grasp, intelligent grasp of what the kingdom of Christ is and the kingdom of God. But when he appears, <laughs> there isn't going to be any more inquiries into this matter. It will all be clarified. Something in my heart sort of leaps for joy when I, because mm -hmm. I don't like all these questions that the flesh, in my own flesh, has. We're looking for his appearing. Now that's the manner. This is the manner of the kingdom. This is how kingdom people are. This mm -hmm. is the point that I want to establish here <coughs> before I close. This is not an abnormal condition. Right. You know that by the way this text, our text read, to them that look for him, mm -hmm. shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Well, what about those that weren't looking for him? Well, I really don't care to discuss that at this time. <coughs> but it's not good. Amen. Right. A lot of these people are church people. Understand. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of them are preachers and teachers. Mm -hmm. And have a, it's a career in religion. Mm -hmm. But this is, the, this is the standard of the kingdom. If, if what we have, if what we have isn't moving us to look forward to Christ's coming, then we really need to discard it and get something else. Amen. Amen. Because this, it, this can't be real. This is what salvation does. Mm -hmm. This is what the gospel grows in people. Now, let's establish that this is the mode of the kingdom. 2 Thessalonians 3.5 And the Lord direct your hearts mm -hmm. into the love of God and into the, the patient waiting for Christ. Amen. That's, that's the mode. That's what God does. If this is what is this what the Lord does? Yeah, well then, this is the kingdom mode. Yeah. This is not a novelty. Mm -hmm. If a person's love for God isn't expanding, and this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. If a person wants to get down to that level, there it is. If it isn't it growing, it, something's wrong. Uh -huh. Amen. If there's not, if this patient waiting for Christ, if this isn't happening, and, it, and this increases, I understand, this increases. If this isn't happening, it increases, then something's wrong. There's some defeat. God isn't at work here because we already, this is what God does. Mm -hmm. And if He isn't doing this, there's some kind of obstacle, see? Mm -hmm. There's some kind of hindrance there. There's some kind of quenching of the Spirit, grieving of the Spirit, turning the back on God, so evil heart, unbelief. Something's there that stopped this. Let's look at it again. Titus, the second chapter, verse 13. Remember, this is the mode now of the kingdom. The grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, live soberly, righteously in God in this present world, looking mm -hmm. for the appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> now, this is what grace teaches. So if you ever wonder, well, how can you tell where grace is around? Well, there is a lot of grace. How can you tell? Where people are denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, and they're living righteously and soberly and godly, and anxiously waiting for the coming of the Lord, grace is in that place. Mm -hmm. Grace is happening. Now, they, these people, they may be deficient in some areas of doctrine from our perspective, but grace has been working there. That's the manner of the kingdom. And again, 2 Timothy 4.8. 
Lord the righteous judge shall give to me when he appears. Lord the righteous judge shall give to me a crown of righteousness which he'll give to me and not to me only but to all those who love his appearing. So this is like this it's like a standard. <laughs> how do you define? How can you what is a word you could you could say that just sums up all the people of God? Just kind of includes them all. Well, you could like born from above. That's that's a phrase that does that. And here's one to love his appearing. That's yeah. a kind of a generic term that yeah. takes all the people of God into account. Now here's here and one other thing in here. It's the standard of the kingdom. Now looking, looking at anxiously, awaiting his coming, running hasting toward it, running past anything that, that waves a flag and says, Don't don't be so anxious to get there. Let's hold on now. Let's wait a little while. There's a song written back in the 70s that said, Wait a little longer, sweet Jesus. It was popular too. Wait a little longer, sweet Jesus. And the idea was that there's many that aren't saved yet. Well, now we really are anxious for people to be saved because God is too. But there's a higher level of discipleship. That from another point, we're really not willing to wait anymore. We want it to be as soon as possible. Amen. There's a battle going on. Now here's one last reason. <coughs> he that has this hope in him, 1 John 3, 3. He that has this hope in, in him, that the hope is in Christ. That's the idea. He that has his hope in him purifies himself mm -hmm. even as he is pure. See, that tells you that's the standard of the kingdom. Because mm -hmm. purity, that's, that's necessity. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. So we're not talking about something optional here. About being holy isn't like a goal Try the best you can to be holy and good luck in the process. Yeah. It's, <laughs> this isn't it. It's like if you aren't, you're out. Yes. So how can I do this? Just by just trying hard? Well, no. I, I spent time doing this, trying and trying hard. And I meant I was serious too. I wasn't casual about it, but until, until the hope of Christ coming began to burn yeah. in my heart, this was very difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah, there were like very, some very public type things you can cleanse yourself of and it <clears throat> kind of looks like you're really making some progress. Mm -hmm. Some people like to quit smoking and they quit drinking. And, <laughs> yeah, but there's some other things that aren't quite that easy to slough off. Mm -hmm. You need a bigger reason to do it. Amen. Here's the reason. Amen. Here's appearing. So you see that's the standard of the kingdom. <clears throat> God directs you into this. The grace of God teaches you to do this. When you love His appearing, that's just, that's the standard. And when you think about it, it helps you to purify yourself. Well, to them that look for Him, shall He pray the second time without sin unto salvation. If looking is not present, it's not a longing for this. To some degree, there's, I understand there's varying degrees. It depends on on your growth, but even a little, even a newborn babe in Christ has has this. Amen. To some degree, has this. Where that's missing, something is fundamentally wrong. Mm -hmm. Where it's found, the Lord is at work. Yes. So, <laughs> if you have this longing in your heart, and maybe you wonder, I wonder if if God is really pleased with me. I, I you know, and you have some doubts about your own personal progress, you take heart in this, and if you're longing for His appearing, whatever you else may you may not have, that is a big plus right there, because He said to them that love His appearing, He's going to give them a crown, Amen. and to those that look for His appearing, Amen. He's going to come without sin unto salvation. So if that's the only the only thing you had, that you've got reason for strong, for strong hope.